Hello. Are we all keeping well? I'm keeping busy. And I uh, can't wait till all this is over. Anyway, we're doing uh, multicolour portraits today. If you can see me on that, because I can't see myself. <coughs> and it's an old man with a beard. Sorry for all those members of the class who get sick of doing old men with beards. But uh, it's much easier than doing a lovely, youthful face where everything's blendy and soft rather than uh, lived in. So um, that's why I've chosen the subject really, because it's not as uh, hard to do as a, a lovely soft portrait. So we're not bothered if we make mistakes actually. And then we'll work our way up to doing beautiful uh, young ladies portraits and things like that. And children, okay? So this one is a similar one to this. Uh, this is Indian ink and watercolour, but we're not using Indian ink today, we're just using watercolour. <coughs> Same principles apply, because we're going to paint um, the watercolour and use the colour as the texture or the tone of values, actually. Don't try and keep up. Uh, I know some people have been trying, but if you think you can, it, it helps to do something really quick so it stops you being fussy. Uh, we don't want it to get too wet, actually. I've got quite a steep angle on my board, so uh, it's going to keep running and dripping. I've also got my hair dry and uh, uh, I'm at home, just asking my assistant. <laughs> just quietly, yeah, so um, and uh, I'm going to start by drawing yeah. the subject. I've actually got another version of this as I did a while ago uh, um, in that turn it off thing. So uh, you have to turn it on. So another version I did, but it's facing the opposite direction. So I've just put that there so you can see uh, the reverse of it, really. And um, that's one in just a lot of salt in there as well. Because we like using salt in the beard. And uh, a bit of wax, okay. So um, because we've only got an hour, I'm going to work quite quick again. Uh, using my pencil and uh, <clears throat> I hope we can see all that. I've got a lamp on as well. Uh, people are looking. I can see. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to start with the head is upright like that. and I can see his ear and everything but he's going off the picture and the top of his head's going off the picture. So if I kind of draw an egg shape that's take, it's going to get his beard on in that kind of uh, area and then I get this egg I'm going off the picture. You have to try and imagine uh, like a big boiled egg and then we position the features. So lots and lots of little lines. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Some people say they couldn't hear me. Well I just suggest turn your volume, volume up. I can't do it sideways because every time I do it landscape it just reverses it into side on. So I can only do it upright unless somebody tells me otherwise. Uh, straight line, straight down the middle of the egg, because that's the centre of his face. If you put a line like that, you see the centre of the face. In fact, usually the left eye, the right eye, sorry, or the left eye, depends on where you're looking, would be in the centre of your picture, usually. Yeah. So um, we're just off centre, actually. And his ears are slightly lower than his eyebrows, so you're actually looking up at him so you've got a curve but it's only a slight curve it wouldn't really matter if you didn't put the curve in you just had the top of his ear a bit lower and the bottom of his ear like I said should be on uh, on level with his nose but ears as you get older uh, grow bigger so you can't go off the bottom you can't go off the top which should be on level with his eyebrows but if it's curving like that so then I've got a straight line and because he's turning to his left my uh, my left is right. Uh, I get a three quarter view, so there's a line that's coming from about here, three quarter view, which is that one. It cuts. So that if that was a straight line, if he was looking straight at you, but he isn't looking at you. He's turning his head, so the centre of the feet has become this curve. All we use that curve for is to find out where the eye position is. So you, because it's a watercolour, if you you don't get the eye position right, uh, it makes a big difference at the end. So the eyes are always in the middle of your egg, even though you think now his eyes are higher. Well, they are because you're looking up slightly, but you've got a curve. So you have to kind of redraw that curve as though it's going behind the egg. 
So where the two curved lines meet, which is there and there, is the centre of his features. And if I put a, a, a thinner socket there, because as the eyes go round the corner, they become narrower, but they all stay at the same size. But I, I put three sockets in. And as you can see, that eye is going to hit the more or less the centre of the egg, if you know what I mean. So this just positions his eyes, really. And he's looking forward, so you put the pupil, the iris, and I can see the iris, top eyelid, like that, and that eye curving away. So I've not gone outside the width of the eye, and his eyebrows sit on top of that socket, okay? I know I've got lots of creases, which we can put in later. So the distance there then, between the eye and his nose, is that shape, okay? And then I get a negative shape here, which is a lovely shadow. But we'll put the other eye in. Again, he's looking straight ahead. So that's the socket, which is the top of the eyebrow, which is about here. And then we've got the pupil in the middle and then the iris. So he's looking straight ahead in that direction, yeah? Because the, you've got the whites of the eyes, which you can't see, but you've got the shape of his eyelid, which is this lovely curve like that. And then the shadow. Now, shadow is important when you're doing watercolours because you need to know where they are. Uh, and then these change into uh, the kind of creases that are coming from his eyebrow, can you see? Uh, up into his, um, his hat or his, uh, his turban or whatever it's worth. Uh, whatever you call it. Uh, so that's the position of the eyes. You've got the distance between the eyes and the width between his nose, which is that bit and that shadow. So if you just kind of sketch it in first, and then I'm going to use uh, a pen. And I got a lovely kind of shadow from his, uh, his top eyelid, which is coming down because it's kind of drooping over his eye, and his bottom eyelid, because the bottom eyelid, top eyelid overhangs the bottom, like that. And then that goes into the shadow area, which you can't really see. And then we get some lovely creases coming up here. You don't have to put those in at this moment in time. But I do need to find out where that uh, the edge of his turban is or and this shadow from that creates on his forehead which is that uh, that shape which goes down the side of his face okay there he has got bags so the circles that I've left here are the areas where the bags are on his eyes now we've got the heads turning I need to find out where the tip of his nose is and if you look at his nose he's got a ball on the end more or less and the edge of that ball is right under this eye so if I drop a line down from that eye straight line and draw the tip of the nose there look at the distance between his bag and then the nose because it's not that far uh, and then we get this shape which is very kind of bulbous and the nostril and then the side of this nostril is right underneath the tear duct so they're quite big Noses, not everybody's, not yeah, some people. Big got a nice big nose. I cannot see the joint from there to that. So I'm going to leave it as, you can leave it as white paper. But I can see the shape at the side of his mouth here and the shadow and a, a line in his mouth. So this eyelid uh, creates a nice cross feet shape there. And then I look at the distance between the nose it's a negative space, it's actually called Rembrandt's triangle, between, it's the distance between the nose and the side of his cheekbone. And if you draw that shape correctly, you should end up with that side of his head, near mm. enough. So you don't, you, know, you don't have to be spot on, but you've got that lovely shape of his eyebrow, which is going off in that direction, and then his hat, and then the shape of that hat coming out, and he's got some hairs, like dreadlocks, coming out from that, yeah. You don't have to do them all. And then the side of his um, cheekbone, as that comes down, like that. And then the position then, from here, I've got a lovely shadow, which is like this. The sun is coming in that direction. So it's casting shadows all over the face. Yeah. Uh, just like that. And that's where the eyebrow sits in there. So this is how I'm doing a kind of a quick sketch. Lots of little lines, because we're going to... Uh, rub out the um, the pencil later and then from that nostril we've got another shadow so you just look at the angle of these shadows you know? and I know he's got his mouth open which is not easy I got the top of his 
if you get the center of the nose which is that where his philtrum would be which is about here and that would be the center of his mouth actually but you can't see much there but all you can see is the gap between his teeth and the shape of his mouth again drop a line down from the eye and the iris and that will give you the width of the shape of his mouth with his mouth open yeah and I know you can see a few teeth and you just kind of draw the shape of one or two that's it you don't want to try and do all the teeth I mean he's only got a few at the top there and that's disappearing around the corner and the other side of the mouth curves away just into that below that triangle shape uh, so and he's got a nice shadow from his top lip as well that actually comes across the mouth and then down the bottom lip and into the beard so these shadows really interesting because they link things together yeah we've got a nice crease here as well uh, in the face like i said this is why it's so easy doing all men and whatever because um you don't have to worry about getting beautiful smooth skin so uh, his lips quite full because that's the thickness of the lip and there's a line in the middle where the two the two um muscles in the bottom lip meet uh, this is the negative shape of his mouth and we actually you can uh, just drop a cross arching so it becomes a dark shape and that goes into this shadow because we're going to paint that later and then from that we get a shape there which is like where his beard is starting and, and then all you do is draw the shape of the moustache and the beard in that so this bit is going to keep white and then this bit is in shadow so and i've got little bits of his beard that are kind of just coming out from the side of his uh, temple if i take a line from here again like i said before and find the top of his ear because it's quite far back you want the distance from the to the ear and if you measure it and compare it to another distance on the picture you probably get the, the correct so it could be like from the center of his nose to the corner of his eye or the corner of his eye to the center of his nose so you get this shape so if i do that on here and then do the same thing there that's where his ear is going to be positioned quite far back yeah i've moved him over slightly because i didn't want him to be falling out the picture and the ears are always at an angle and then you get the the shape of the ear which is the very dark shape there which and then the thickness of the, the side edge of the ear, things like that. Um, and shapes, because they're quite interesting shapes here. And then you get this, uh, we, we would draw a line from that to where his uh, earlobe is going to be, and whatever. All this is negative, so we don't, and then I get the back of his neck, which is about here. Okay, the beard is just a big shape from the ear. That's, the, that's kind of the, the temple. Uh, the cheekbones about that and that's where the beard is going to come from and he's got this kind of pointy bit and then it disappears into the rest of his shoulder okay so um, I'm looking at the distance between things first the hat or whatever he's wearing is just a big shape on his head like that uh, it comes that way as well so that casts a shadow and then it goes up to there I've got two kind of things hanging down which you can put some wax on later and then the corner of his hat goes just past the top of his hair like that yeah um we can't see much in the eyes because they're quite dark uh, so we can just you know keep we well, need to know where he is actually looking all right and then i'm going to use the pen now uh, if you want to put the shoulder on we can do we've got some lovely darks here we've got a nice shadow here which is from his uh, tunic or whatever he's wearing um, so all this is in shadow as well so that's the bottom of his beard so if I use a pen now to um, I'll just draw a bit of a line here because that's underneath the nose when we draw the bottom of the nose it, it's in shadow that big area so that's his nostril which is quite big yeah and then we get a shadow there and that shadow goes all the way down here because the sun's coming from above Okay, so then um, put my pencil away, um, use my pen now. Right? This is a waterproof pen, and I only use the pen to put in the position of things that I'm happy with 
uh, once I've done the pencil, yeah? So, uh, you know, if you're not happy with things, change them now. Don't use your pen because it's too late then. You can't uh, you have to start using gouache, yeah? So I'm just using the shape of things, that lovely negative in here, which is that negative space between his nose and his eye. Uh, the bottom eyelid, we can put some wax on that. There's going to be some wax on this one. Um, and that goes into, you can use the pen for the creases because it's quite nice up to us. The creases in his, his uh, phone he's got. Uh, that's casting the shadow there. And then uh, got a nice light area there. You get a nice little bit of thin skin underneath the bottom, on the bottom eyelid that catches the sunlight and creates these shadows. So all this, uh, we've got negative space and then that's going into that shape. Uh, again, we've got that shape there and this comes into here. That's what I keep saying shapes, shapes, shapes and that's all it is. You're just looking at shapes. Trying to get yourself out of the routine of saying that's his nose and that's his ear. That's his eye. If you just think shape, join shape, join shape, um, that gives you that really nice shadowy bit that comes up into this area and thick creases uh, coming down from his hat. We've got a nice shadow under there, so that is where the bottom of it is going to be. And this goes around his forehead, like we said. So we get this really nice area, and that is a shadow up as well. We could put his hat in actually. Um, just creases uh, and folds in the fabric and the way it folds like that. Um, and that is the bit that's coming up here. Okay, so we got uh, like I said a few stands here. Use a bit of wax on that. And that's going off the picture so it doesn't really matter because all this is in shadow. The back of his ear, that's important because we need to know where the ear sits and the shapes within the ears are quite interesting shapes. Nice big dark area there where, uh, before you get down to the earlobe and the earlobe's quite big as well. Some people have earlobes, some don't. This is, um, there are aliens who don't have earlobes, that's <laughs> Anyway, um, so that's the cheekbone and then that's coming down into his cheek. A nice thin mark actually. Again, this is the nose that is creating that shadow. You can put a very thin line underneath where the shadow is. This is the nostril, right there. Uh, there's a big crease at the side of his nostril that casts a shadow as well. And then this is the nostril sitting on his face that casts a shadow down the side of his face. And this is where, again, we've got the bags just under his eye. Uh, we've got little creases here, uh, little creases here. That goes into a big crease there. Yeah. And we've also got the shadow on that side of the face, so I can put all cool colour there and all warm colour here. So looking down from out the nostril then, this negative space at the side of his shape of his cheek, and then that bit is, comes quite far in because it's a nice angle that disappears into the side of his mouth. So that's the mouth, this is the filtering bit, and then that's the, uh, the top lip or above. Uh, underneath the top lip, sorry, which is getting reflected light, so it's not very dark. And this is the shadow coming down to the mouth, uh, which joins onto that shadow, so it's going down the side of his mouth. And then that goes into his beard anyway. So this is a big shape for the beard, put his teeth in, a couple of them. And then the reflected light on the mouth. Yeah, that might be a little bit more of a distance, actually. Like I say, you've still got time to just move things slightly. Uh, the inside of his uh, his mouth and then the shadow on his bottom lip like that and then the bottom lip itself you can actually see a line in his lip and that's the bottom lip and then we get this sh shadow going into the beard <coughs> and the way these kind of hairs come out things like that. Um, I'm going to let that disappear slightly into the beard because the beard's coming from there I've got a few of these uh, like uh, tassels in his hair coming down. Uh, we might not bother with the shoulder. Uh, just depends what you want to put in. And then the beard, he's got this kind of angular shape. Angular myrtle. Uh, and that goes into his moustache there. So you get the moustache. Uh, not a lot of uh, light on the hair, on the moustache. And then uh, at the side here, we've got the shadow coming down. 
it actually follows the shapes of his uh, creases in his forehead, so it's quite in his forehead and his cheekbones, it's quite interesting. And um, I'm taking a little bit more time doing this, that's all. Very nice. The wood do. Sorry? Very nice. And then that, <coughs> from that, we go into his beard here, which is a lot of wax I'm going to use just for uh, creating these lights, just little bits of light on little bits of his hairs coming out, catching the sunlight. We don't actually need to bother too much, but I do like negative space, so negative space is a shape that we can introduce just to like, you know, in, like, just show that there is something else there, but not necessarily what it is. All right, yes, go on. okay. And these creases go into the forehead, yeah. get a nice flat area, and then the forehead changes direction. So I've got pen line there, hopefully I've got everything in before I rub out. This is quite dark as well. Like I said, just cross out to if you're unsure. Uh, you just want to keep those very dark areas yeah, as dark areas. You can do the same with his eye, like that. Cross out the shadow inside the eye, very, very dark where the nose is and inside that eye is very dark. You're only going to see a little bit. All right, and then here we've got more of this shadow that goes into the eyebrow. Uh -huh. And then we're about, yeah. So he's talking or something and he's preaching or whatever he's doing. <coughs> Take my rubber. There's a few marks on here actually. I'm not trying to draw any of his hair, his moustache, his beard, anything like that. We just give a kind of feeling for the shape of the beard. Uh, you'll see the moustache anyway, you know, you'll see things appear. And we're, we're using the, the wax to bring out just a bit of the light catching the beard and uh, like I said, and the moustache if we need to. You could use masking fluid, it doesn't really matter. So that's, you know, you can see it okay. The drawing more or less. Uh, the eyes looking in one direction, the creases on the nose, things like that. And a lot of your underpainting is actually going to be very, very light tones because it's quite subtle actually, the skin tone. And you're much better trying to let the colours blend on their own. There is a point where you don't want it to get too wet. You just want it to kind of blend, then dry it off, and then finish off with mid-tones and then the darks. And that's it. Yeah? So all this is quite dark as well. But I don't want to cross that slap because I'm going to spout. Uh, you'll be able to see it, you see. So I've got a bit of candle wax here. This is candle wax. Yeah. Um, and just to, um, like I said, some of the hair from the side of his um, temple and things and going into the beard here. And you just want very thin, kind of squiggly shapes. Yeah? Don't try and do everything or don't do the whole thing in white because it's not. This side of his beard is a darker tone than this side of his beard because the light's catching that bit. You can put some little bits here as well. Uh, you can put some nice light down the edges of where the sunlight's catching the top lip. And you can put some nice light on his nose because in the center of his nose there is a bit more white. You can put white, you can put the wax where you don't want the paint to run into it. So like I said, the bottom of his eyelid there you got a nice highlight. You can put it on the top of his eyelid, just where it's the eye. And you can put it underneath shadows, so when you paint the shadow, it doesn't run down the face. Things like that. Anything to make it easy. We can add it here, for these tassels or whatever. And when you paint over them, they just stand out. Uh, we've got a few, we've got the bottom lip, and then we've got a few of these little hairs here, underneath his uh, lip. And then we've got some at the side of his mouth that are catching the light, little squiggly bits. Okay, like that. You can see a few coming out from that side. But when you paint the negative space over here, it's, it will bring out the, uh, the colours. A lot of his ear is in shadow, so I'm not going to touch it. And he can have a few little light, light areas just bringing out the shape of this area where the the beard changes direction. Okay, you can use masking fluid, like I said, if you want to, but then you have to let it dry. So the only reason I'm, I'm, make, I'm using wax is because uh, of that reason. So I've got my big brush, which is uh, an Escoda, 
I got Miss Sable, which I use all the time, and a filbert, which is a lovely kind of flat and it's got a nice belly on it. So you always start with the big brush. If you can use the big brush as long as you can, the all the better. Um, what I'm just going to put in here, because uh, I've found my pen a bit, is a little negative space here, which is coming from like here, which is a crease, and it's quite interesting. So I want to put that in to be perked. So you don't have to do everything, it's just little areas that uh, are, are kind of interesting to you. Yeah? Uh, um, and when you, you forgot where you put the wax now, eh? so when you go over it, it's a nice surprise to see it uh, coming out. So it's a black and white image and we're going to be using the same colours. So it's, uh, I'm not using any yellow in this because I don't want him to have a yellow face. So Bert Sienna is nice and warm, so that would be a lot of the light on this side of his face, sunlight. And alizarine crimson is nice and cool, so it's a blend of burnt sienna and alizarine going into this side of his face. And then alizarine and ultramarine make these really nice purples, which can go into this side of the face. Uh, you can use green at the top of the head or whatever, uh, viridian, um, just to add other kind of shapes and colour. Uh, you can add it in the face as well, it doesn't really matter that much, but uh, you can keep... Um, these really, really nice blendy colours first. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the colour out. I always use a smaller brush. So we got um, a bit of sienna first, lots of water. Uh, and just add the water to your palette. So you get in, you should be able to see this, I've tilted it. Mm. Um, alizarine crimson at the side of that, which is lovely, cool, cool red, which is pink when you add a lot of water to it. So it's skin tone. No, skins are not pink, so I'm trying to add other colours like ultramarine blue. So I've got some blue here, uh, which is quite uh, nicely mix, nice mix with the uh, alizarine crimson to give you purples. I've got to use some green actually, so we'll use a bit of green. You can use cerulean blue as well, because cerulean's quite nice. So if I get some green out ready for some of the background, or I might drop it into his hat and his clothing. Just to add a bit of contrast, uh, like a colour that um, complements another colour. So it's, a, it's all up to you what you, what colours you want to use, you know. We just use a limited palette first and then add your own colours to it. So it's very personal. So I've got some cerulean blue, which I like using in, uh, you can use it in his, um, in his beard, his moustache or whatever. Okay, and then don't worry about it. What? <coughs> Excuse me, and then I get my big brush. <clears throat> so I'm thinking about areas over this side of his face that's going to be warm, <clears throat> and inside the nose. So I know the light's coming from this direction, but this side of his face is not going to be um, just white. Uh, I have got areas that are white, so I've actually put some wax on. But uh, these parts of his face are going to be warm. Okay, and uh, we can leave bits of white and then we're going to work into it. So the side of his forehead is going to change now into this alizarine tone. Like that. And then the side of that, we can mix some ultramarine blue because ultramarine blue and alizarine mix really well. And I'm going to add some green at the top just for his, um, the shape of his hat or whatever. Well then I'm not bothered if the blue uh, runs into it and I'm going to use some cerulean blue for his beard. Uh, I did, I'm not said, but I'm going to use some uh, salt in the beard just to give you that really nice um, blend. Uh, more pink, if you like, for his, his, his uh, ear. A uh, bit more of this ultramarine, um, so let it blend and drip. Don't worry about it running too much. That's cerulean blue. It's a cerulean blue I've just added. I want this to happen. You can see where it's blending on its own. And it's also bringing out uh, the, sh the wax I put in for the side of his beard. Look, he's got a blue beard. And then that's coming into the mouth. And if you look at the mouth, because I'm working down as well, it's giving me time to uh, add other tones. Uh, burnt sienna, alizarine crimson, that's kind of in the top lip. Uh, it doesn't matter. You, can, you don't need to paint around the mouth because the shadow is darker than the mouth. So when you put the shadow in, when it's dry, that's going to be the shape of uh, his beard. 
and then here we've got the lovely warmth that's going to be in the beard uh -huh. and the only thing that brings his beard out is the dark shape you paint underneath it okay so that's more or less finished no it's not i'm only joking mm -hmm. uh <laughs> That's more or less all these lovely colours on, letting them blend together on their own. You can take the blobs off if you don't like blobs. Yeah. And the best pe uh, time to add uh, kind of other colours now, other tonal values, I should say, is while it's uh, slightly damp uh, and they'll blend better. Uh, but you do have to be careful that you don't put too much colour on so it, um, uh, it runs too much or it gets too wet. So I've used some salt, it's nearly forgotten, in the beard. Just throw that in at the bottom. You don't have to put it everywhere, just in the beard. And then uh, I'm going to use some uh, more alizarine. And then you start to go kind of thicker with the pigment, actually. Alizarine crimson, like I said, is a lovely shadow. Uh, he's got one at the side of his nose. It comes underneath his nose as well. Uh, it comes down here. And I can also add blue to that because, because he's got uh, a moustache. It's going to be quite dark here, where the uh, the moustache is. Don't paint it all, just paint a shadow and let it blend again into the mouth and into other shapes underneath. Yeah? You can always take colour off a little bit, but it, that shadow is going to come down across the mouth because it's um, quite dark. So I've got my alizarine, uh, little bits of blue, I can add to it to darken it. If you've got a big blob of colour, it's not drying, just take it off and I'll go over to this eye and I'll start to put in some of the shadows. So this is just a lizarine, okay? We can use burnt sienna as well because you just want to blend that into a shape underneath the eyes and these shapes go into the forehead and they also create these lovely cool shapes around the head because the head is an egg so we get these lovely cool shapes and we can soften it. Soften the shape with your brush. You use the brush all the time for softening. Uh, and that goes into the nose. And because the eye is quite dark, I haven't put any wax in his eyes because he can't see it, any white. All right. uh, we could put reflections in later by adding dark bits. And then I got a really nice shadow at the bottom of his eye. Like this. So I just plonk in, again, that technical term for painting, plonk in. And then we've got this really lovely shadow on this side of his face. It's a negative space. And if you paint it as it is, you should have something similar to what you're looking at. Yeah. And this eye slightly. So I use a bit more side of my brush there because that's going into his forehead. All right. And then that goes into some of these creases. Uh, the creases, don't put them in too dark. It's much better to paint the shape between the crease rather than do the very dark creases. I mean, the pen's going to be kind of dark enough. And we can also drag the side of your brush down to give you shapes in his forehead, which is a little bit darker at the top. All right? So that's kind of my middle tone value. Working on slightly damp paper where I get this really nice shape um, just on the bottom of his um, uh, baggy eye. All right? And then on this one, again, because it's going around the corner there, his nose, it's slightly darker here. So I can just add a bit more sienna and alizarine to give me that slightly darker shape. Right, then. And there's a little bit here, which is the difference between the corner of his eye and the nose, which is just that little shape that brings out creases in his, uh, in his face like that. Yeah, keep it nice and loose. Don't worry too much about uh, finishing anything at the moment. So a lot of this is going to is just a lizarine. And as we're going slightly darker this side of the face, I'm, I'm adding more uh, more blue to it. So again, we can come up here. Lovely bluish tone goes into the eye like that. Again, I can put that on this side, and then the shadow that creates on the side of his eye there which goes into the crease in his hair, his forehead sorry, and the shadow that's created by the hat, his hat, um, which goes into the top of his forehead like a nice crease 
I get, take the blobs out. Don't get bogged down in one area, try and move around the picture. Sometimes it's best to, if you see one tone and you've got it somewhere else, just drop it in like that, let it blend. That's going to bring out the top of his ear, I hope, and that brings out the light in his hair. Like that. The side of your brush will stop you being too fussy. Um, as we said about the nose, it's lovely and dark, nice dark crease. Uh, nice dark shadow, then we can make it look like there is little bits of his moustache there just by adding very small marks but nothing too pulse it. That brings out the philtrum which is at the top of his, right underneath the centre of his nose and that brings out the centre, uh, the shape of the nose underneath. Uh, and this is this uh, lovely angular shape underneath. Right. Um, working right in the head now, again, I want more tone, really, it is changing tone though, slightly, which is quite nice, I can add a, a little bit darker colour, just to give you the cheekbone, and as we're coming down to where his moustache is, it's going slightly darker the face, as it gets down to where the moustache is, okay, moustache, a bit of, a um, bit more alizarine, Lots of water, keep the top lip slightly light, lighter because of reflection. It's going to go a lot um, darker inside the mouth. Uh, the bottom lip creates that nice uh, uh, shape on the side of his mouth where the moustache is. Stand back every now and again, just off shut the door actually, sorry. <coughs> when you go to a funeral, uh, no beer with Corona, he died uh, natural causes actually. Um, inside the ear, just teasing little things. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably work around the figure now for some of these darks and uh, let some of the light shit. Um, if you want to bring out a negative in the background, as long as it's dry, yeah, like there, um, we can have a darker shape that's actually going to bring out the uh, the shadow, uh, the light catching the side of the face. So I've got some cerulean blue and a bit of viridian green, or perhaps not, because I've got that in the hat. So we'll change the colour, um, we'll go a bit um, alizarine and that's uh, add some more a bit of green to that to make it kind of darker um, and this is a shape around the side of his head so because it's um, a negative space in the background yeah the hair is going to be darker than that and then we can blend that in to uh, whatever shape you've got there and we'll add a bit to his hat that, uh, to give you that curve blow it use a straw pass out uh, um, green and blue I'm just going to put a little bit from here into the hat to give you that shadow uh, on the hat uh, just make sure it's dry underneath so you're not just lifting the colour off because you have to kind of do it quite quick so it's um, you just put a, a tone in and then underneath here Again, alizarine and blue, and we can add a bit of green to that to darken it. I'll get a nice tone. And as I'm coming around the um, shape of his uh, ear, which is that shape, and that's going to blend into the hat, um, whatever, around his ear. And that's going to blend into the top of his hat. So here we've got the back of the neck, and then that goes into my negative space, which is this shape I put here. This makes an interesting shape. This is underneath his beard so I've got lots of little bits of uh, the hair coming out but I've got a nice flat area where the shadow is. Uh -huh. Blue, more blue, uh, just down here and then under this area. Let that blend 
into the beard and we get this lovely soft tunnel bag. More water to say, um, bringing out that little shape I put in earlier just for a crease. Although we can blend it and have it disappearing all together. Um, great, that's all I need. And then into that, uh, just leave it, let it run, let it blend uh, into this shape at the top of his shoulder. Right, and as that's drying, I can speed it up a bit with my hair dryer. Nice. Stuck there in the leg of the chair. I need a bigger studio. Try that off. You can do a lot of blazing. I don't know how it's looking on the picture. Quite light at the moment. You can do a lot of blazing in the outer tone. And it's going to go lighter as it dries. So, um, We'll start again at the top using the same total values, the same colours, less water, lots of colour, lots of uh, paint. So as you're going darker now, we use blue to um, bring out the, the dark shadows. So we can paint some of his eye uh, around, and the top eyelid always casts a shadow on the eye, and then it comes down the side and casts a shadow. That brings out that lovely, uh, very dark area. And then this goes into the side of his nose, which brings out the side of the nose. You can go into some of the creases now, like that, just here and there, soften them with the finger. Uh, you're just bringing it to life, really, by adding these darks. I'm just going to add a bit of green to that area and blue, because I want this um, negative here to be nice and dark. And this is the side of his head. Use your finger to blend and smudge, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, pick out the shape at the side of his head there, which goes into his forehead. Like that. And that takes, gives you the shape of his forehead. And it also gives you the shape of the uh, his kind of dreadlocks he's got, because he's got these lovely uh, dreadlocks coming down. And that brings out this cheekbone. And then we've got this shape here. I'm not trying to paint it as it is because it's got all these lovely you know, markings in there, uh, little light bits. So just pick out the shapes. In the noise, the best time to drop darker colour in is when it's wet. So uh, as you do the wet, like that, we can add alizarine and viridian. Mix it together because the two complementary colours, red and green, seldom seen. And then we add that to make lovely shadows, can you see? That's as dark as you can actually get without using black. And we don't want to use black because it's not a, it's not actually a colour. But some people get nice results. It's like using Indian ink really, but uh, you don't have to use it. And then just inside the eye, again, pupil's going to be dark because it's a hole. And inside this, um, we've got to glaze quite a bit around the eye. We need that to dry a little bit. And then I'll put his nostril in because that's quite dark. And we can blend that into the top of his, uh, the hairs in his uh, moustache. Keeping the colours clean as well, try and keep your warms and your cools. So you've got Bert Sienna at one side and the Lizarines uh, near enough. So if you want to glaze anything like that, or you want to make it slightly darker, uh, but uh, just glazing it rather than. Uh, using dark, you know, too cool a colour, whatever. You can just do things like that. So now we've got uh, the other eye. Again, we can use blue and red and green. Combination of all those. Look at the shapes, uh, look at the shadows. You know, And then uh, just drag those into uh, the shapes in it around the eye. Uh, if you look here again, pupil, iris, top shadow above his eye which comes down into that crease around his cheek like that so it's quite a, a, a deep one uh, and then inside the eye you can just see because it's changing direction there and it's going a little bit uh, uh, darker where the teardrop is 
and that's changing but I don't want it to go too dark here because I want it to, want to blend that in with a bit of blue um, so this blue we want some reflected lights as well in the middle of the shadow so I'm using a bit of blue to go over this reflected light really there just don't let it run down the face that's the main thing um, let that go into the corner of his eye and leave it we can always make it uh, lighter uh, darker sorry later this is the nose uh, he's got some creases in his nose because he's like scrunching his face up so I just added a few uh, this is where again uh, the change his nose changes direction so I've got a lovely shadow here which is pink because it's getting reflected light and it's warm so that yeah so it's dried quite a lot and I'm getting a lovely shape around that and that's the the shadow on this side of his face which is the crease in the side of his cheek where his moustache is going to be uh, around here a lot of light there so uh, we're going to use some more ultramarine blue to paint around the bottom of his nose like that. and let that blend into the shadow of his moustache like that. Yeah. you can't paint every hair on his moustache I'm just giving it an idea that there are a few there use the same blue Blue is very good for doing shadows. Use the same blue for uh, these creases here and this shadow uh, as it goes into that side of his face. Okay, we can use the uh, side of the brush just to give a few textures and then down the side of the mouth and then here it just blends into the rest of his beard. So there's nothing too much um, going on, is there? Uh, this baggy eye, I'm just going to add a bit of sienna and alizarine just to give me some tone because it's slightly a little bit darker here this is what I meant by you can paint in between the shadows uh, uh, the creases in his face so what they stand out as these shapes around the the eyes you know so you don't have to do these dark lines actually all the time you just create these little skin tones that is giving you uh, the little creases in his forehead so we are looking quite, you know, close and detailed now, but uh, it's once you put the colour on, you're just bringing out the darks and the shadows and whatever. The hat doesn't really matter, it's irrelevant. I might leave the hat as it is, I might put it in later, it doesn't really matter at this time. I want to get the expression on his face, I want to get the shapes around the face. So I'm looking at blue, uh, a green and blue and red again. So I put the shape of the shadow in the mouth because it's got this lovely dark area that comes this way, missed a bit, and that's where his tooth is missing. So he hasn't got pure white teeth, yeah, like some of these uh, people on telly, uh, but he has got this really nice shadow inside the mouth. So when you do the shadow, don't just add one colour. Don't just do one dark, add some more, because I can actually see a bit of his tongue there and some other teeth, you know, but we don't have to do the other teeth, it's just a big shape. But you can leave gaps. <coughs> so that goes into the corner of his mouth, across the, um, across the front of his top lip there, which that little line's going to be. Um, and that's the top lip, the top of his top lip, I should say. So that's a bit of green and red again, very dark tone inside the mouth that brings out the shape of his uh, teeth and his mouth. Yeah. Quite simple. Um, use some more colour, alizarine again, if you want to kind of get the shape around the corner of his mouth, because that goes a little bit darker there, and inside here as well. Yeah. And then underneath, the top, over the top lip, we're getting this shadow. I've just moved it down a bit because it was a bit far up. So the shadow on the top lip coming down and then as we're going into that shape uh, here, we've got a lovely light catching the top of his beard. Uh, we can blend that into the rest of his beard and thing. And then we get a bit of a shape there as well. Like that. Um, adding more kind of sienna colours 
to this side of his beard just to bring out the shape of the beard, nothing else. Yeah. Uh, we've got a few creases there actually, so you can kind of, uh, if you want to just put uh, a crease in, like that. And this bit which we started, we can use it again to make a bigger shape. Dry brush. As you start dry brushing, you're leaving brush marks. Is that the time? It's not going to take me. Uh, it's not going to take an hour. It's going to be well. You'll get a rough idea after an hour what it's going to look like. I'll finish it off, and then you can uh, have a see it online. I put it online. I put it on face tube. And your mate says, "Have you been on that face tube?" Ah. Uh, Anyway, there you go, that's the nose. This ear is wonderful. Ears are wonderful things. Um, lots of alizarin, bit of blue. So around the ear, it's quite dark there. Yeah. Just bringing out a little bits of info. And the top of his ear is quite dark, actually, because that's where his, the hair is. Which, uh, and again, I've got some of these like creases in his, his folds of his skin near the eye. And what have you, so I can just put those in, leave the underpainting as some of the light bits, and this bit is quite his crease in his forehead in his cheek is quite dark as well because that's a, a different tone to the beard because the beard's not white, but it's also not uh, uh, it's also got color, and it's darker, than, it's lighter than the skin tone, okay. Um, and then the side of his ear inside the ear like that uh, little shapes you see in now around his ears just paint them in a tone of value that represents that color you can use sienna as well anything warm cool together sienna warms up and alizarine cools down uh, again you've got this lovely sienna feeling to the ear and then the side of his neck Again, we're going to use some alizarine. Uh, so that's underneath the earlobe. This is the neck, which is in shadow. So we don't have to do too much of it. And then we paint the background around it. I'm just going to put a bit of uh, bit of dark on this side of the face. Uh, he's got something there that's quite nice. that just brings out um, the corner of his mouth and his beard. Uh, like that. So I've just had a bit more dark in that area, a bit more dark in the corner of his eye, <coughs> uh, underneath the rim of his headdress, whatever it's worth. Um, we can use the greeny blue, or bluey green again for this shadow on this side of his face. So as we go around the ear again, around the side of his neck, like that, and then blend that into this negative space, which is inside the neck. Okay, and we can splatter it, don't have everything kind of too fixed. Dark marks, so a bit of a a bit of blue, a bit of green, uh, varying amounts. If you have more red, it goes kind of, you know. Not warmer, but it gives that lovely contrast to it. Uh, add more green, it's cooler. Drag that down. Lovely shape under the under there. And uh, there's a nice dirt then just under the rim of the hat and some shapes here. Again, pick out a few shapes around the um, the beard at the bottom. This is dry brush now, it's actually leaving a lot of texture. If you want it to stop rolling, throw some more salt on. Um, add a little bit more tone to some of the shape time is five two. Not bad, not bad. Um you got Jeff Jeff on Blackfield from Pentony. Um what was I going to do with that? Sienna. Uh what was it? Yeah, I'm just adding a bit more warmth on this side. Uh, there's a crease there as well inside his face. You know, little bits of information. Crease there with his 
his baggy eyes. Uh, this is going to be a little bit darker in his beard and then that goes into this side of his beard uh, and then change his tone. So he's actually got a kind of shape around his mouth there and it's quite dark there where the beard meets the mouth and whatever. And then that's the shadow from his top lip that gets a little bit uh, lighter. And it's up to you when you want to stop. You can stop and leave it and let it dry. Or, you know, it can uh, be much better sometimes just to leave it to dry. That's what I was going to do, So I was going to add a bit more warmer colour just to bring out um, this side of his uh, face and his shoulder. But then again, you don't have to have it, you can just take it off. Spatter, bit of green, again, drag. You get the texture of his fab, the fabric in his hat. Yeah. Uh, this is bucket for two hundred pound extra rough. So you want to use the paper uh, as the um, texture of cloth, if you can. Um, that's going a bit darker there and there, and then it comes down into that. But really we don't want too much going on out of the picture, really. Keep it in the head. Um, just here, if you notice, that's a little bit darker. So I'll just glaze it to make it, knock it back and then soften the edges with a the, with the brush. That's all you're doing all the time, softening edges. Uh, with a damp brush and then the side of his head here which goes into the beard it's just a similar shape so here i'm gonna add the final dark and then call it a day a monday all right the next one's going to be wednesday and we're moving on to acrylics so that'll be fun um so if you do like acrylics i'm going to do a simple landscape uh, again the shadow from his hat And then that's going into the side of his head if you are. But you don't have to paint everything, just leave it as a shape. Okay, shadow in his eye. And that goes underneath. So that's where I've got the wax on the bottom eyelid. And we can also put some uh, darks just at the top of his top lip. <coughs> and then a bit of a crease there in his hat. Okay, try and use a big brush, stop being too fussy, just let the, just work around the subject. Uh, you can always use your gouache, which I've not got any of it, but I'm not bothered with that. <coughs> and then your final jarks, like I said, uh, thickest pigment you can get, straight from the tube, there's no water added. So uh, red and green are uh, going to be very dark, uh, not any water whatsoever. So you can add blue to it. So you get really strong, because you think you're darkest there, but you're not, because you can darker still, you see? And that is, you can even do shapes within the shadows, which is what we do, uh, to bring out these lovely darks in his eyes and his face and whatever. Um, nostril, there's only certain areas of your face that are very dark, and as you see now, it starts to kind of bring out the skin tones, um, the shape of his nose, uh, his eyes. Again, don't know what colour his eyes are, not that bothered really, but uh, uh, inside the eye, little touch here, little touch there. I might just add a little bit more underneath the eyebrow, because, because it's a socket here, it goes slightly darker there and then it blends in. Uh, same over there, but that's already in. So that goes slightly darker on this side. And that's uh, that's about it. I finish off. I can't stop once I start, you know that. Eh? I mean, two hours is too long, but uh, we wouldn't have time actually for two hours. But, um, lovely shadow around his ear, inside that ear. 
And when I cross hatched and things like that, it actually disappears, so you can't see it afterwards. Some of the, you can see a bit of the pen line, but not a lot of it. Uh, so don't worry about you know your pen showing and things like that. People get really stressed over really little things. Just think about working from dark, uh, light to dark yeah, all the time. So the last thing you put on should be your darks. So halfway through your watercolour, it should be rubbish. And then towards the end, it should start looking uh, a bit more realistic. And whatever you want to capture, actually. Um, Tommy, stop! Ben's gone out. I can hear you shouting. Whoever's watching. It's an angry man. Okay, well done. A bit of splattering towards the end just to give you some textures. Add some spots in his face or whatever. <coughs> I'm not spurned. I hope I'm not got uh, started coughing. I hope I've not got anything. Anyway, take the purple off. That's a different version to that one. Not many colours in that other one. Uh, if I'm not here on Wednesday, I'm in bed with, uh, with coronavirus. It's not be funny. Pork fun, it's not funny. I'm fine to death again. I don't know anybody else. Take the tape off. Turn it up a bit. Let's check me a thing, yeah. There you go. That'll do. Well done. Thank you. Um, if you've not had a go, have a go and post it on the group page, please. So we can uh, all see it and comment. We're getting a lot of nice stuff, actually. Because you've got more time, rather than being in class, you're doing a bit more to it than you would in class. So you get the general idea with the demos and uh, you can finish it off in class at home so that's great uh but put them on the page you know don't just post them in the comments put them on the page so we can see them and uh, uh we're all nice with each other nobody going to say it's rubbish that get it off yeah we'll always find something positive to say okay keep safe and uh see you wednesday if you're joining me if not have a good one bye